Um, Taoiseach, the issue I want to address today is Ireland's development aid policy and it's particularly because there are three international pending conferences coming up between now and December. But first I want to acknowledge our aid programme, the work of Irish Aid and the work of the NGOs and missionaries who work in very difficult circumstances and sometimes very dangerous situations. And also a recent report commissioned by Trocre which affirms Ireland's place as being one of the best when it comes to aid because our aid is untied. But increasingly that untied aid untied uh, untied aid is coming under threat because what donors are looking for now is that they would benefit the donor country would also benefit and what we're seeing is aid flowing through the private sector in the form of procurement contracts for government for goods and services the vast majority for firms from rich countries so what we're seeing is self-interested development so that's indicating a need for greater policy coherence to prevent human rights abuses and also to prevent corruption now the three conferences one in Addis Ababa on financing for development, one in, in, in New York on the Sustainable Development Goals and the third in Geneva on climate change. And Ireland is participating in all three and playing a, playing a particular role in preparing and co-facilitating one of those. The first one in Addis in July is on financing for development and there has to be a clear and a comprehensive agreement at Addis. What's vital for Addis, and this is my question now, is about Ireland's role at Addis, is first of all there is a need for a senior government figure to attend and while it's not a pledging conference will we recommit to honouring the 0.7% and how we are going to do that by 2020 because then we can be a voice for that commitment from other countries and also will Ireland support the calls for an inter-governmental tax body under the auspices of the UN that could really tackle tax evasion, tax avoidance and illicit tax flows all of which are contributing to poverty and to inequality because what's being proposed by the OECD will not address those needs. It's vital vital for Addis to get it right and Ireland can play a strong role there because if Addis doesn't get it right the other two conferences on sustainable development goals and climate change will be meaningless. Thank you. Uh, this, is a, this is a very uh, important issue that W. Sullivan raises. Uh, as I understand it, the, uh, the conference in Addis Ababa is, is really about uh, pledging for funding, uh, which will be an important element that was raised with me by the, by the, uh, uh, the, the World Bank um, uh, chairman when he was here. Um, uh, 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 Minister Sherlock has normally attended at these, at these, uh, at these uh, occasions. Um, and, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure uh, who is attending on behalf of the government here, but there will be a representative uh, there in any event, Deputy Sullivan. Um, I, I know that the Uchtaron uh, will attend in, um, in New York at the, at the one in September, and I ex expect to, uh, to be there for uh, a short period myself uh, at the... Um, at, at, at that development goal uh, conference and then the uh, third one is on climate change in uh, Paris in December. Uh, I, I think that following the, the Pope's encyclical there's a new impetus about all of this um, and, and what that means for, for countries. Um, I hope that the political process will, will respond. I know that in our own case here as a small country uh, we would like to be able to have targets that we can actually achieve uh, and we face a real challenge there because the, the targets set for, for, uh, for Ireland for 2020 um, were, were based in my view on, on inadequate evidence and scientific uh, information in the first place uh, and if the process continues from 2020 to 2030 on that basis uh, whatever government represents our country in that period will be subject to enormous fines of the scale of five or five and a half or six billion so we've we've got a consent from the european council in respect of the agri profile that we have here uh, which will i think allow us in some small way to be better able to compete towards achievable targets um, now given the given the change in the um, in the economic situation here for the last number of years, uh, while Ireland was very much on track to achieve the level of uh, of, uh, of contribution uh, for uh, for these for these goals, uh, that was somewhat stunted. Obviously, it's a matter the government will consider as we prepare for the. Uh, for the October budget as to how, how that best can be reflected. So uh, see to it that um, we have a representative, uh, if not Minister Sherlock, then a senior representative, a minister if that's possible, to uh, go to Addis Ababa. Uh, I know that the Uthron, um is, is going to attend in New York. I hope to be there myself. Um, and uh, thirdly, uh, the one in, in, in December in Paris dealing with uh, the issues of climate change. It's an important consideration and possibly worthy of a 
uh, of um, at all debate here at an appropriate time, Deputy Sullivan. I would be happy to, to accommodate all the deputies in that regard. Taoiseach, that, is, that is welcome because the consequences of Ireland and others not being that strong voice that added is that we're, we will continue to see phenomenal amounts of money being drained from countries of the global south and I'm talking about billions and billions of dollars and that's because of the financial flows, the tax injustice <coughs> and the cost of climate change. So financial transparency and accountability meaning country by country reporting is vital because globalisation has allowed the multinationals dodge their tax obligations and Ireland can be that voice at Addis. Um, it is welcome that the sustainable development goals are going to cover all countries because there's certainly a lot of unfinished business from the Millennium Development Goals because they did not hit those who are poorest, that is women and children. Now, climate change is the topic in Geneva, and as you mentioned, the Pope's Laudato Si, and also Monday and Tuesday, the Climate Change Conference in Maynooth. And the issues we know that pollution and waste and reduced biodiversity all contribute to climate change, which means inequality and poverty continuing. So my question comes around to our climate change bill, because it doesn't mention climate justice, and that's so important. And yet, in 2013, at the Climate Change Conference, conference hosted by the government, the government supported the principle of climate justice. So I'm asking that you will ensure that our climate change bill will include the principle of climate justice because otherwise we could be accused of hypocrisy that we will be saying one thing on the international stage but something very different on the national scale. Thank you. Yeah, well, pledges were made before in Copenhagen and uh, other locations and weren't followed through by countries. Um, clearly I think the, the matter has moved on where the vast the majority of governments are acutely aware of the responsibilities now. Certainly at the European Council this is an issue that comes up on a very, on a very regular basis with, uh, with clear uh, you know, priorities for people to follow through on. That's why we've, we've, uh, we have our own challenges that we face here. You mentioned pollution, waste and biodiversity. Uh, obviously there are some extraordinary things actually happening with the, in the new tech world to deal with elements of this and the more that can happen in, in that regard the better. Some of them pioneered I have to say here in Ireland. Uh, the climate bill um, actually didn't set out specific targets because of the fact that it's so far out into 2050, 2030, 2050, uh, that the, uh, the objectives uh, were set out clearly. Uh, I, don't, I don't object, Deputy Sullivan, to having climate justice referred to uh, in this matter. Former President Mary Robinson has been very vocal on this and I've spoken to her, to her about it and her particular interest in this area. So, like, uh, Ireland will, 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 will play our part as, as far as we can, we'll contribute where we can, and we've got to challenge ourselves uh, in measuring up to being recognised as a country that really is fulfilling our our obligations in respect of, of uh, climate change um, and uh, and the other the, the the other elements of these three uh, discussions. So um, I'll ask Whip maybe to make arrangements, Deputy Sullivan, that members can have a, an opportunity to have their say on this here in the House. Uh, hopefully before we before we leave for the uh, for the summer recess. Thank you. That's